Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. I, male 34, caught my partner, female 32, cheating with a hidden recorder. I'm ending it tonight, but I have a thousand things on my mind. Do I dish it all out, or tell her it's over and leave it at that? Do I block her? I've been in a turbulent two-year relationship with my GF. We've had many ups and downs, but I've always been patient and done my hardest to make it work, no matter what. During a dispute with her, her son said something that made me assume she wasn't loyal. She's also been behaving strangely and distantly. So I made the decision to find out once and for all. I purchased a covert audio recorder, spent the night at her place, departed for work the next morning, and left the recorder on a dresser. The recorder's battery life is around 14 hours. She planned to invite an old buddy over on the first day. She warned me ahead of time that this would happen. My girlfriend has practically adopted her cousin's five-year-old kids since both of her cousin's parents are addicted to drugs and are unable to care for her. So she let the father come over and meet his kid, whom he hadn't seen in a long time. They play and speak for a bit, and that's all there is to it. So the results on that first day pleasantly surprised me and confirmed me in our connection. But I wanted to be certain, so I repeated the process on Friday morning. I went to work and forgot about the recorder. The recordings were considerably different this time. One of the early discussions is a phone call in which my GF asks someone, why aren't you contacting me anymore? Are you still with that? Then, in the latter part of the tape, I hear what I was hoping to hear. She's banning the five-year father. Olds, there's no denying it. That's the sound of them having. I've taken too many risks with this relationship. I had my suspicions, but since I was wrongfully accused of infidelity in a previous relationship, I prefer to give the accused the benefit of the doubt when there is no concrete proof. I now have it. I asked if I could drop something off in a park near her apartment and we could chat. When she asked what I was talking about, I said, everything. So she's probably aware that this isn't good. I'm pacing around my room. I have so many things I want to say to her, but I'm not sure whether I should. I want to tell her what I discovered, but not how I discovered it. I'll most likely lie and tell her that a source gave me proof and that I'm not giving up the source. Part of the reason is because I'm aware of the legal concerns, but largely it's because I've never kept a secret from her, and I'd want to experience the sensation of being able to keep a secret from her for once, should drive her insane as well. I want to inform her that it's over, that I don't want any more contact with her, and that she should not contact me. I'm going to block her phone number in front of her and advise she do the same. But I also want to tell her that I believe we had a future together, I've been saving for a home, and that I can't believe she would do something so dumb that impacts more people than just us, and how I wasted so much time trying to make it work with her when I could have been seeking for someone who would appreciate me. But I'm not sure whether it's a waste of time. Should I keep things brief and straightforward, like in a commercial transaction, or should I let it all hang out? Story 2. My brother cheated maybe and I'm supporting SIL kids. Now, what? Confronting brother. I'm 35 years old have my own daycare, a tiny boy, a spouse I like, and a marriage we're working on that is so far successful. My brother Andy was the only person I confided in IRL while my spouse had an emotional affair. I served in return from two tours in Iraq, not from the US by the way, and Andy did the same a few years later. We were both there at the same time, mine second and his first, but in separate functions slash groups. I felt so weak and ashamed after my husband's EA, yet wanting. To remain with a cheater and thinking, wow, I know I deserve more than this, am I settling by staying? Andy taught me that as long as I did what I wanted in H, with the rest you know, I could keep my pride. He was equally angry with my husband, but when they met, he was cordial. Yesterday slash Friday, I received a phone call from Andy's wife, Bella. She's weeping and hardly coherent, and she's talking in hushed tones as if she's doing her best to keep the drama from their children 3 and 5 Why? Anyway, I go to my at-home office and ask my husband if he can finish early and watch our son, since the other children from my daycare have already departed. I stated that something was wrong with Bella and that I needed to check in with them. My husband completed the tasks that needed to be done immediately away, and I was on my way to Bella in 20 minutes. Their location is around 30 minutes away from us. Bella was a shambles, and Andy was nowhere to be seen. It was early evening by this point. So I tucked Bella into bed with tea, showered the kids, and cobbled something together from their fridge for them to eat. 
Then we all sat on Bella's bed and watched hilarious animal movies on YouTube, which thankfully appeared to cheer Bella up quite a little. The laughter of the children had a positive impact. Then I tucked the kids in. They complained about not staying up late on a Friday. Mostly the oldest, the youngest, doesn't know what a Friday is lol. But I told them I needed some alone girl time with their mom and said, we'll drink wine, eat those dry with the stinky cheese and talk, a lot. Oh, they'd rather sleep than do that, ha. Huh? After that, I created a platter with just that, cheese and wine, as well as some chocolate from my husband's stockpile in the vehicle. As I sat on their bed next to Bella, she had discovered their iPad and thrown it over before pouring herself from the tray. Her Facebook was open on the iPad, with a conversation tab from a clearly fake slash anonymous account. The guy claimed to be married to the lady Andy was having an affair with, and there were photos of hotel receipts, etc., that were badly shot. During my perusal of the discourse, they emerged one by one, one after the other. The fact that Andy had gone away to meet with military mates was noted by Bella, who thought it was funny. Something he and I have always enjoyed doing is talking about this and that, reminiscing and other such topics. Given that we were not in the same groups, his pals are not my friends, and so I am unable to provide an explanation. After everything was said and done, Bella told me that she had unlocked and opened a sealed package, holding all of Andy's social media accounts email addresses, and bank account information, all of which he has on hand in case he is seriously injured. I have one as well. It's something they advocate and is a good idea even when the situation is peaceful. And she noted that the receipts added up to the amount on his credit card and that it wasn't the location he had said he visited with his buds. For those who don't understand what I'm saying, my sweet sensitive brother is now spending family slash joined money on an overnight stay in a secluded hamlet with his mistress. Apparently, she is a married woman with a kid of her own, according to the stranger. While it is clear that Bella had found her out on Facebook, she does not know who she is and the two of them, the mistress and Andy, do not seem to have anything in common or mutual contacts. Once in a while, a fortuitous meeting could occur. Is it a dating app or something else? If this is the case, no one knows how they came to be together. What's the deal with the phony account? Throughout the night, we spoke to each other. As a result, she intends to meet with an attorney as soon as possible after the incident. On Monday, get in touch with them, simply to make her aware of her legal rights and obligations and so on. We live in a place where divorces are often less complicated and emotional. He will not be informed since she has taken her half of the funds from their joint bank accounts. The big kicker, however, was when she encouraged me to drive up to Andy's home and confront him about his behavior. On the surface, I'm informing him that they've been discovered and that he has to get his act together and go home immediately. I told Bella that I didn't want to be more actively involved, but that I would always be her friend and listen to her since she is family and the mother of my niece and nephew, and that I would always be there for her. Andy may not approve of my involvement, which is unfortunate. He's with two children that I admire as much as my own, and I enjoy their childhoods, their happiness, and the stability of their family. That is not an option. That man is a jerk. If this is the case, he should be relieved that I will not beat the ever-loving ass out of him if this is the case. And I'm the only one of us who is still in the reserve, so I can take advantage of the fact that he's soft right now. My younger brother, who is now 32 years old, has left me feeling really dissatisfied. So, yes, that's all. I'm texting on my phone as I watch my son sleep. I've tucked him in and I'm anticipating a deep nap for my son. After that, I'll say farewell to my husband before heading up to the rental cottage on the lake. My intention for spending my Saturday evening was not to do anything like that.